Okay, so this is something uh, not in my wheelhouse, but my uh, dryer died, and uh, so I looked it up real quick, and it's getting error code F1 on there, which Google said, hey, it means it can't communicate to something. Uh, YouTube said uh, it's either something unplugged from the uh, main board or it's the main board. Everything was plugged in, so now we're here looking at the main board. Wasn't planning on doing a video up about this, but I popped it open, and it looks like it's going to be a relatively simple repair. Other than this, this doesn't look good. Um, but so it, it it looks to me like the relay for the main power over here uh, is trace blue for some reason. Um, I don't think it's likely that the uh, relay itself is the problem because this is the switching side of it and um, this is where it connects to the plug. It looks like um, I'm not seeing anything else shorted on here. So I, I'm thinking if we just fix repair this trace here, we'll fix the board. So we're going to try doing that here. So let's first just clean it off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to see what we have left. Uh, I've seen much worse on amplifiers before, so... It honestly looks like with some flux we'll just be able to solder and just reuse the uh, original uh, via here. It doesn't look like it's too bad. Alright, so we've uh, repaired that connection. Uh, I'm not seeing any signs of cracked solder joints on any of these, uh, but I, I've seen damage like this to uh, amplifiers before where um, vibration damage has caused it, but the board itself doesn't look like we have too many cracked solder joints on here, so I, I don't know, this could still not fix the problem. Uh, I mean, unless it's a design flaw where there's too much current flowing through here, uh, th there's probably still something wrong with whatever connects to this, which I would assume is probably a, a motor, uh, just judging by the size of those connections there. And yeah, these, these definitely have the most, and this is probably heating elements here, and this is probably the motor, but I don't know. I'm just guessing. I know literally nothing about uh, this stuff. So let's. I'm gonna go test this out, and if it's a repair, I'll let you. Know. Okay, just to get at the main board here, you have a screw there, a screw there, which uh, these are there representing holes. You just take those two out, and then you can pop the lid off. And then once you pop the lid off, you have two cables on this side and a couple of cables around here. Uh, I would assume there's some difference in different models because I have some unpopulated um, ones on mine. Uh, then you just have this screw on the back to uh, take the whole main board loose here and you just slide it to the side, it comes right off. So that's all there is to getting it off. Uh, and then getting it out, there's just tabs on it. So kind of similar to the uh, GM uh, AC controllers there. Okay, so I just put the main board uh, right there back in. So let's uh, power this thing up and see if it's working. And there we go, we no longer have F1. It's uh, able to operate and it seems to not just be blowing right back out. So it seems to be good to go for now. So it's now been a couple of days and uh, it's not giving me any problems. Uh, but I wanted to take a second and talk about uh, how jealous I am of the uh, appliance repair industry compared to what I work on most of the time. Because tucked inside of the washing machine was the text sheet uh, that gives me all of the diagrams to everything. I mean, it doesn't give me a breakout of, of the main board. It'll just say, you know, machine control, electronics, and stuff like that. But, I mean, that's to be expected. But it gives you diagrams of where everything goes. And with this, I can see that the motor is a blue wire, and it looks like it was the only blue wire. So it looks like that switch was most likely the, um, the motor control. So it just turns on and off the motor. 
Um, which makes sense because the issue I was having is it'd say F1 and the motor didn't turn on at all. You, you couldn't hear any rotation of it. So, um, and just fixing that cracked solder joint or blown out solder joint, uh, uh, repaired it. Um, not sure what blew out the solder joint. Um, maybe it was overcurrent. Maybe there is a problem with the motor, but it's been a couple of days, hasn't given any issues. So um, it, maybe it was just a cracked solder joint and then it failed. Because sometimes when those things fail, they can fail pretty uh, catastrophically. I see it in amplifiers a lot. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to touch on this. This is pretty cool. Uh, I actually, uh, I figured there would be one somewhere in there. I just didn't know where to find it. Uh, but it was it was just tucked up inside of the um, uh, the head of it, which I, I think is pretty cool because it gives it gives a lot of um, technical information where all the screws are, uh, what the plugs do, um, and the orientation of the wire on the plugs, and then you have some diagnostic modes that you can do. Um, so it's it's pretty good information. Um, I think it's pretty interesting that appliances still include these. I've heard uh, that less and less appliances are including these and they're getting harder to come by, but I really don't work on appliances enough to know if that's true or not. Uh, I have noticed the last couple of dishwashers I've installed in properties uh, have not uh, had these with them, um, but the dishwashers are pretty simple anyways. I don't I don't think you really need that uh, For a dishwasher M maybe just to get into like the diagnostic mode and stuff, uh, but it also explained all the different um, Errors too. It, it said that f one's just a communication error that it's just not able to communicate to some uh, part of it, so uh, it's pretty pretty vague, but still a whole lot better than you get with the automotive industry for just an end user or somebody like me trying to do it. I mean, uh, dealerships have access to stuff like this, I would assume, uh, but they, they just don't give it to the general public, uh, which really sucks because there's uh, we, we need some right to repair laws. Uh, but don't get me started on right to repair. I could make an hour long video of ranting about right to repair, but this being included and just some common sense really makes it where I can fix my own dryer and I don't have to pay somebody to come out and do it. And I'm on a d deadline. I'm, I'm moving soon. So I needed to get it back up and running so we could get our laundry done and, and get packed up for our move. So, yeah, uh, I hope you guys liked the video. I don't want to go on too long of a rant because I, I could really rant for quite a while about right to repair. So I'm just going to end it here. Maybe I'll do a video in the future about right to repair. Uh, now that I'm out of the Air Force, I'm going to have time to uh, do more things. So uh, hopefully I could actually catch a right to repair hearing if there was one somewhere here in the florida georgia alabama area to uh to go catch so uh, i'll see you guys in the next video